Steve Cole. I'm the Southern Regional Manager for MyTech New Zealand and a fellow of the Institute of Professional Engineers of New Zealand. So let's get started with some basics behind the logic of simple engineering principles. Now you may think you don't need to understand too much about engineering, but it does form such an important part of our industry. It's essential to have at least some rudimentary knowledge of some easy to understand engineering principles. Now if I told you the formula we use to design a timber beam is WL squared over eight times one over FB times Z, where Z equals BD squared over six, you'd think that looks pretty complicated. Well, I can assure you we can turn that into a formula that is much easier to understand. It is the actual load divided by the allowable load has got to be less than or equal to one. So what that means, of course, is that it is actually something we practice in our everyday lives. Let's take, for example, we're going to pick up an object. Now, the first thing we do is we decide whether we're actually strong enough to do so. So the formula becomes the actual load or the weight of the object divided by allowable load, how strong we are. Let's take, for example, a 25 kg weight. And I'm perfectly capable of lifting a 50 kg weight. The simple formula is the actual load, 25 kgs, divided by my allowable load, how strong I am, 50 kgs. The answer is 0.5, it's well below one. So we have a correct calculation. Now let's look at the formula on a much greater scale. Let's look at a crane that is rated to pick up 30 tons. Now for some reason the operator wants to pick up 40 tons. So our calculation simply becomes the actual load, 40 tons, Divided by our allowable load, which is 30 tonne, the rating of the crane, the answer is 1.33. And this is the result of that calculation. Oh, brilliant. Oh. Now we apply this same logic to all of our structural designs. The actual load will be a combination of, say, a roof weight, it could be a floor load, snow, wind, earthquake, etc. The allowable load is simply the timber member we use to hold that load up with. Now, if we have a calculation that's above one, and we can't change the actual load, obviously because our snow, wind, and roof weights are going to remain the same, we can look at the allowable load, which is the timber. There we would look at either a larger timber section size, we could look at increasing the grade of the timber, or in fact, in some cases, actually add more timber members to carry that same load, all designed to getting that formula below one. So where does all this structural stuff fit within our residential market? Well, you can be quite sure that behind every timber size design, every bracing demand, any fixing designs, and all the other designs that we are required to design to, there's this significant engineering analysis behind that. We're cutting out the guesswork. We know what our actual load is. We know that we're going to use the correct product, which in this case is the allowable load, all designed to getting that formula below one. So there's the logic behind simple engineering principles. In the second module, I cover off specific loads and how we deal with those at design stage. So make sure we check out the rest of the series.